Good day to be safe. Good morning. Good morning, Adrian. <laughs>
I'm glad Jesus took my case. Amen. Amen. He's the only one that could take my case. Right. Man, I'm glad he did.
before I got saved he write down all them old bad dirty deeds I always done it was probably a pretty big book Jack Johnson boy it had all kind of stuff but boy one day I come up here to an altar and I asked the Lord into my heart and I said Lord will you forgive me of all those sins and you know what he did with that book Yeah, he threw it away yeah. hey amen that book's no more thank God I'm no longer responsible for them deeds the old man done thank God that my name's in the Lamb's Book of Life and all them old deeds, Jesse, they gone in behind me. Never to be brought up on me again. Right. Not even at the judgment. Right. Not now and not then. When I go to the judgment, I will not have to answer for those deeds that i done before Calvary. Can you say amen to that amen. this morning? Amen. God help it be awful, Jason, uh, to try to live your life for the Lord and get saved and still have to face those things again on the day of judgment. But thank God. Those things are forgotten. He said, cast in the sea of forgiveness, never to be brought up on me again. That evidence has been destroyed. It's just like if somebody was in a murder case and they had all kind of information in the, in the, in the sheriff's department and the detective said, man, this is, a, this is a shut case. It's as simple as this. We've got all the evidence. They ain't even much meat for a trial. This man is guilty. We've got everything right here to prove that. That's what the devil had on me. And that's what he had on me. We was guilty. We were dead in our trespasses, in our sins. But something happened. But when I met Jesus, all that evidence, he got blood, he got gold. He got lost. He got destroyed. And now that very man uh, that was guilty, 
that he was going to face a trial and be convicted of murder. Now, when he goes before the judge, now they say, Judge, uh, we got this man here on murder charges. Well, can I see the evidence? Well, Judge, we had a pile of it. We had a whole book, but we can't find it. And the judge said, well, get that out of here. I'm calling a mistrial. If you ain't got any evidence, uh, you ain't got a case. I'm glad the devil ain't got no evidence on me no more. He ain't got a case against me no more. Thank God Jesus Christ settled my debt and he paid it on Calvary. And if he hadn't for you this morning, I got good news that he will. And that's the only thing good about me. You say, are you good because you're a preacher? No, I'm still a low down, dirty, a rotten son of a gun. But you know what? I know a man. I know a man that loves me. And he said, I'll take your sin. I'll bear him on Calvary. I'll take your shame. I'll take everything that was coming to you. He said, I'll take the beating. I'll take the punishment. I'll take the death so that your rotten heart can go free. And I want to thank him this morning for that. I want to thank him for a good weekend I had. I want to thank him for prayers he answered for me this weekend. I'm serving a true, a living God who is worthy of our praise. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, and if you can't feel this sometimes, uh, you need to get saved because this is real. Amen. Thank the Lord. We got some more young that's going to sing. I better shut up or I'll get to preaching. Bring y'all, come on. I feel good this morning. I'm saved. Somebody looks scared to death. You ain't saved. Amen, brother. Me too. Amen, brother. It's kind of like when you're home and you do something when you're a kid. Dad, take that leather belt off. <laughs> Correct me. Yeah, but when I said I'm sorry, he didn't change my name. Amen. And the Lord didn't take my name out of the book. Amen, I, brother. Like I said, I've made more mistakes than anybody. But I thank the Lord that my name's in there. Amen, Amen, brother. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Good stuff. He counts the stars, one and all. He knows how much sand is on the shore. He sees every sparrow that falls. He made the mountains and the seas. He's in control of everything. Of all creatures, great and small, he knows my name. Every step that I take, every move that I make, every tear that I've cried, he knows my name. When I'm overwhelmed by the pain, can't see the light of day, I know I'll be just fine. tell you what's in store I don't know a lot of things I don't have all the answers to the questions of life but I know in whom I have believed he knows my name every step that I take every move that
knows my name this morning, ain't you? Amen. He's never not been faithful to me. He takes care of my family day in and day out. Amen. If he just saved me, that's good enough. <laughs> but it's what he brought me from. It's him fixing my family. It's him doing everything in this world that Amen. I can't do. Tell I'm Jesse. nothing without him. I'm nothing without God. And I'm glad he saved me. Amen. Amen. Anybody else? Obey the Lord this morning. If God's been good to you and something's on your heart, you better tell it. Yeah, I want to praise him for all he's done for me. I don't have any idea of how I'm alive today. Where I've been and what I've been through. But I thank God for some old Christians on their knees praying that God spare his life. If I could get back in, I'd just stand this morning and say I love him. I appreciate all he's done for my family. Amen. Amen. Somebody else. <clears throat> Anybody else? Right. <clears throat> and he took everything that I struggled with and took all that away. And I'm telling the devil this morning, I ain't going to be that man again. I'll tell you, he's been good to me. I ain't going to give up yet. Right. He ain't give right. up on me. He gave me chance after chance, time after time. Times I let him down, and he still gave me chance after chance. I don't know why. I couldn't tell you why I'm here right now. It's all because of him. It ain't nothing to me. It's nothing I've done. You know, I see a lot of people, and they say there's such a change in your life. I can't believe you turned around like that. Oh, brother, it wasn't me. It was God. We're serving a master and a man that can take anything, any of the struggles you're facing this morning, he can take all of it away. I'll tell you, like you're talking about prophecy, I've been thinking on it. It scares me because I got lost loved ones, but he's coming today where he's going to return, and I think it's wrapping up. But you, you just got to get right. And I don't care what you may be facing in here this morning. God can take it all and make it disappear. Whatever situation it may be, whatever something you might see big in your life, but ain't nothing too big for my God. I love him this morning. He's been good to me, Eddie. I tell you, I felt so lonely and lost for these two weeks working out of town. When you ain't got Christian folk around you, you feel depressed, you get low. But I'll tell you something, I feel good this morning. Amen. And it's good to be back in this house. It's good. Amen. Amen. If you don't, something ain't right. That's right, right. <laughs> Somebody else this morning, something on your heart, anybody. Amen. God bless you, buddy. Anybody else this morning? He's been good to me, too. <laughs> you know, I think about that song, God's still good. He's still good to me every day. He comes through for me in mighty ways this week. And I just want to say that thank you for answering prayer. Thank you. Amen. 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 Thank God. Anybody else? All right. If you got your Bibles, turn with me over to First Thessalonians. Chapter number five, you don't have to stand right now, just find your place. <clears throat> I want to lay a little foundation first. If you want to go there, I'll be going to 1 
Thessalonians chapter number 5. I'll be going to Matthew chapter number 24. I'll be going to Revelation 16. <clears throat> go ahead. Let me just go ahead and stand when you find your place for the reading of the word. I'll go ahead over here, read this, then we'll get in to the message. You pray for me because this is, this is hard preaching, but it's necessary preaching. 1 Thessalonians chapter number 5, verse number 1. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say peace and safety and sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child that, that shall not escape. Right there on that verse, let me stop for a minute. You women that's had children, you know that when that time comes, you're sitting at the house or wherever you are, and you look over at your husband, and you say, we're getting to the hospital now. This baby's coming. This baby's on the way. You know that once that starts, there ain't no stopping it. There ain't no stopping it. It's going to come, and that baby's going to be born, and it's going to be delivered. You might as well. Uh, just go ahead and get prepared. That's what the word is saying right here. It said once these things get going and it gets started, it's not going to cease. It's going to, don't, don't be deceived. What I'm going to preach to you this morning is not fairy tale. It's not mythical. Uh, it, it's not some of this, uh, it's not like a bunch of old fairy tales. This right here is going to happen uh, just as sure as you got in your car or you truck, truck and drove to the church this morning. As sure as you laid your head down in a bed last night and woke up this morning and woke up hungry and wanted something to eat. This right here is going to happen. Don't, you know what we want to do? Uh, folks want to push it out of their mind because it makes them uncomfortable. And you think because you push it out of your mind or you think because I don't believe it that it changes things. How funny is that to think that because you don't believe it or because you push it out of your mind that that's just going to change what God's going to do. Everything in this book that God has predicted up until now, he said it's going to happen and it happened. And the things from the end of this book that God said this is going to happen, you can rest assured it's going to happen where you believe it or not and where you're ready or not, it's going to to happen. So the best advice I can give you this morning is to be ready for the coming of the Lord because he is soon coming. And it said, but as ye children, but, but, but ye brethren, be not in darkness that the day should overtake you as a thief. You are all the children of light and the children of the day. You are not the children of night or darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. Verse number 11, wherefore comfort yourselves together and edify one another even as you do. You can be seated, but go ahead and turn with me over to Matthew uh, chapter number 24. As you turn it over there, I want you to think about the verses that we just read over here in 1 Thessalonians. You know, if I knew for sure, Jamie Ether, I know right where you live, uh, I've been to your house several times, and if I was over here at the BP drug uh, gas station, and I seen some men, and they had, they, I seen them, they was serious. They, they was putting guns in their trunk. Uh, they was putting rifles and shotguns and they had their ski mask and they was all dressed in black and I overheard them off to the side. Uh, they said, we're going out here to such and such Lackey Town Road uh, tonight at midnight and we're going to break into Jamie Eppler's house. Uh, we know him. We know his daughter. We know his wife. Uh, we're going to destroy them. We're going to take everything that they got. Uh, we're going to bring great harm upon him. We're going to destroy him and his family. And I could see that they were serious. Uh, they had the equipment. Uh, they had everything they needed. They had the address. Uh, they had everything set up. And I heard that, brother. Uh, would you want me to get on the phone or come to your house and say, Jamie, uh, I'm dead serious, buddy. I seen these men. Uh, they're plotting to come kill you. They're plotting to destroy your family. Uh, they're plotting to come in and cause great harm uh, to your family. Would you want me to come and tell you and give you that warning? Or would you want 
want me just to. And that, surely that would probably worry you all day long, but it would give you time uh, to get home and get prepared. Uh, you could get your guns ready. You could get your family in a safe place and it wouldn't come to you and catch you off guard. Or would you rather me just hush my mouth and not say a word uh, so that you could go on home that night and have a good supper in peace and watch you ball game on TV and enjoy that and lay your head down and fall asleep with no worries but all of a sudden then a great destruction come to your house and then men come in and destroy your house and destroy your family and take everything that you got. Uh, brother, what would you rather me do? I'm asking you. You're trying to me tell you, that's what I'm doing this morning, church. I'm giving you a warning. Jesus Christ is soon coming. I mean, real. And, you, and people always say, well, I've heard that since I was a boy. The Bible says you'll say that. The Bible says you'll say that. Man, I tell you what, this thing is wine. I don't have time to get into the things uh, that's going on in Israel, uh, but Israel is God's time clock. And buddy, it's winding down uh, ever so uh, fast. The end of time is right here on the brink and we better get to taking this thing uh, way more serious uh, than we ought to. And we got men in the pulpits all over this nation. Uh, they don't want to touch this uh, with a 10 foot pole you know why because it would scare their lost congregation so bad they wouldn't have three there for next Sunday morning amen would y'all agree you agreed that Jesus is soon coming we agree there's going to be some bad things come upon this earth uh, Jamie has agreed that he would want me to tell him that do y'all agree with Jamie on that but would you say this would you agree with me this morning if I heard that about this man's family? You know I love you, don't you, buddy? Absolutely. You know I do. Matter of fact, I told him this morning, I was like, son, I got on. He's hiding about something. <laughs> me and him have been praying about something for about a couple of years. God answered that prayer this week. That sucker didn't tell me yet. <laughs> I got on him because I love him. I was excited to hear God answered a big prayer in his life. And I said, I couldn't believe you didn't tell me. He said, well, I was going to stand up in church and tell it. I said, would you forget me? <laughs> but I said all that to say I love him and I love his family and he knows that I do. And if I knew that was coming, would y'all all agree that if I didn't warn him, even though that I was at my house in my bed asleep, and all that stuff come upon his house, would I not be partly responsible and if he survived, and then his family was killed, his home was destroyed, and everything that he worked for was taken, and then all of a sudden, I come up to him, and I said, Jamie, I know that's going to happen. I heard them boys plotting about that. He'd be so mad at me. I can't believe you didn't tell me. You let my family suffer. You let everything that I had be taken away from me. I thought we was friends. I thought you loved me. Uh, why didn't you tell me this? Uh, that's why I get up here and preach against sin. Uh, like I preach against sin. It ain't to belittle you. It ain't to make you feel bad. It's so that you can be prepared uh, for the coming of the Lord. Amen. And it's my responsibility and not mine only. How many in here has got lost loved ones? That if the Lord come right now, they'll die and go to hell. You know it. Everybody in here raised their hand. It's up to you to tell them it's time we quit sugarcoating it. It's time that we say, well, I'm just going to keep on praying and God will come. It's time we go to knocking on their doors. I heard, I, I didn't even have this in mind. I prayed God just give me what he had given me this morning. So I'm just going to follow him for a few minutes. I heard a preacher preach one day that he had a lost daughter. And he said, I know that she wasn't right with God. And he said, the Holy Ghost began to uh, deal with me and said, if you don't do something, uh, she's going to die soon and she's going to go to hell. And you know what that preacher your man did you say oh he's crazy hey he wasn't crazy he loved his family do you love your family this morning I'll tell you what I love my family I love my wife I love my mom and dad I love my children I love my little grandbabies that I call mine and I would lay down my life for them in a hot minute you know why uh, because I love them uh, with all of my heart and they love me and Jesus loves you just as much or more than that right there this morning he already laid 
his life down so that we don't have to suffer and go through the things of this world. But there's going to be a day come when God's going to pull back that love and he's going to pull back that mercy and it's going to be hell on earth. Let me do, I, I was going to run a rabbit right there, but I'm not going to. Let me get on over here. But it would be my fault if I didn't give the warning. It's up to you and me to quit sugarcoating it and telling our family it's going to be okay. You're doing them more harm than good. We need to tell them about that preacher. He knew that daughter was going to die and go to hell. One morning she woke up and he was laying on her front porch, curled up in the ball at the door. She couldn't even open the door to get out of the house. And she said, Daddy, what are you doing here? He said, I'm going to lay right here until I starve to death and die from hunger or cold. He said, until you get right with God. She said, Daddy, you're crazy. I get up from here. i got to go to work. He said, I ain't moving. He said, God showed me there wasn't much time left for you. And he said, I'm not going to give up on you. He said, I'm not going to let you go to hell. He said, if you die and go to hell, he said, you're going to walk over my dead body to get there. It's time, church. If you say you love your families, if you say you love them babies, if you say you love your mom and dad, it's time that we say, hey, uh, the life you're living does not line up with this Bible. You can call yourself a Christian. You can call yourself a pilot. You can call yourself whatever you want to call yourself. But if your name's not written in the Lamb's book of life, and if you don't live up to this scripture and the word that's in it, you will die and go to hell as sure as the world. Amen. Amen. Y'all have heard me say it time and time again, but those folks here that don't know me and they ain't never heard me say it, Brother Mike, if I was to say, hey, I'm a helicopter pilot. I'm a helicopter pilot. You can trust me. And there's one sitting in the parking lot. Would you want to get in that thing and go with me for a ride? You know good and well I ain't no helicopter pilot, don't you? That's the same way a lot of folks, they'll say, oh, I'm a Christian. I'm a member of the church. I've joined the church down here. But your life ain't bearing no fruit. You ain't got the fruit of a Christian. And when the day of the Lord comes back and you stand before him on the judgment, you'll say, Lord, I was a Christian. I was a member of Old Fort Free Will Baptist Church. I went to Sunday school. I sung in the choir. But if your name's not written in the Lamb's Book of Life, he'll say, depart from me. Uh, you worker of iniquity I never knew you but Lord I'm a good person it don't matter that you're good what matters is that the blood's been applied to your life how do I know that if I come to you you ought to be able to tell me about the day that you got saved and how you was a wretched sinner and how you lived in sin how you was a drunkard or a fornicator or whatever the case may be but oh you'll remember the day uh, that you come to Jesus and said Lord will you forgive me of my sins and he totally transformed your life. You didn't live that way no more. You didn't act that way no more. You didn't hang out with the same people no more. That's how you can know that you know uh, that you passed uh, from death unto life. But if your life's still the same, if you're still hanging out at the bar drinking with your buddies, if you're still going down here cussing and using profane language and that is your lifestyle, then you are in no wise a child of God. I don't care what any other preacher tells you. It ain't what I say. It's what the book says. And everything in this life is based off the book. Not some man with a tie hung around his neck. Most of them need to be hung by it anyway. Leading folks to hell from a pulpit. But we see right here that Jesus is soon coming. Over here in Matthew chapter number 24 in verse number 36. But, but of that day and hour knoweth no man. No, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days there were before the flood, there was eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark. You know what he's saying right here? He said, boy, everything was happy-go-lucky. Uh, people was committing gluttony. Uh, they was uh, eating and filling their bellies full, and they thought everything was all right. Uh, the Bible said they was a drinking. Uh, there's a having their parties. Uh, there's a drinking. Uh, there's a feeling good. There's a marrying, giving in marriage. Uh, you know what? We're living in them days right now. Uh, we're so full. We're a gluttonous people. Uh, we're a gluttonous people. We want more uh, than we need and we take more uh, than we have to everywhere you go, even in our little old town right here. 
Uh, we ain't got 14 buildings in town uh, that's worth not burning down. And out of the 14 of them, 13 of them's got breweries and wineries and alcohol in them. That's all this world thinks about. Hey Amen. We ain't even got a decent place to eat. Uh, but you can go get drunk in town. That's the days that we're living in. Uh, marriage don't mean nothing to people no more. Uh, being faithful to your wife uh, don't mean nothing no more. Uh, we're living in the very days uh, that Noah lived in and God didn't blink his eye at it then and he ain't going to it now. He said if he didn't spare the old world and if he didn't spare the angels in heaven, uh, why, why in the world you think he's going to save this world uh, that's a living in the same shape that they did? He's not. He's not going to do it. But I tell you what, it said, and they do not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall the coming of the Son of Man be. Only one you're going to get to one I'm giving you right now. There ain't going to be somebody come knock on your door and say, Jesus is coming tonight. You better get ready. I'm giving you the warning now. And this might be the last warning that you ever hear. You better take heed to it. Amen. The Bible said, then there shall be two in the field and one shall be taken and the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill. One shall be taken and the other left. Watch therefore, for you know not what hour the Lord doth come. But know this, that if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. Now we're going to get to the message. There's coming a day real soon that Jesus Christ is coming back for his bride. He's coming back for those that are saved and blood bought. You know them ones I was talking about that I said to make things right on an altar and their lives change and you ain't never been the same? Don't tell me you're a Christian if your life ain't different. Then what did he save you from? Don't tell me you can still sin and live an illicit lifestyle and you're okay. Then what in the world did God save you from? What did he save you out of if you're still in the same mess? I ain't preaching perfection. We all make mistakes. We all fail and falter. God help me not to meddle. I heard a preacher say this one time in a revival we went to the other day. He said he's got a friend that's a homosexual. Or an acquaintance, we'll say. And he said, he came to him and said, Preacher, he said, God made me this way. He said, I don't have a choice. He said, for one, I don't believe that. But he said, two, it's a still a sin whether you say God made you that way or not. I'm saying all this to say we live in a sinful world. But the Bible says for us to be a what? A separate people. To what? Come out from among the world. He said, flee from the what? The very appearance of sin. His buddy came to him and I thought sure as well he was going to sugarcoat this somehow but I was proud of that little young preacher. He said even if you say God made you that way he said it's a sin and he said if it ain't something that you get under the blood he said it will send you to hell like any other sin. He said how you figure? He said well God made me and he said I'm attracted to women. You men in here attracted to women? If you ain't, I don't want you going camping with me. <laughs> but he looked his acquaintance in the face and he said, God can help you with that. God can save you from that. He said, but if you turn to that, he said, you'll die and go to hell. He said, I'm attracted to women. He said, but Jesus and my wife expect me to refrain from that. You might make a mistake. God's not going to send you to hell for that. But boy, if you're living a lifestyle of that, then I highly doubt you've ever been saved. And the Bible said, nobody knows the hour, not even the angels, when Jesus is coming back. He said, they'll be too grinding. You know what that means, kids? You know what that means? Not everybody knows. That's why I'm going to break this down a little bit. You'll be at work. Maybe at Gentry, Stephen. You know, an old boy sitting there working on an air unit. When Jesus splits out eastern sky, anybody ever seen them big old, on TV? You seen them big old magnets 
to have at the junkyard. And that crane will swing that thing over there. Whoa, and all of a sudden, that guy in that crane, Adrian, he'll hit that button and wham, son, everything gets metal, goes up there and hits that big old magnet. I mean, it sucks it out there for you can see it. But everything that's not metal, it don't even move. It's left right there like nothing ever happened. That's how the rapture's going to be. Jesus is going to come down so close in a moment, a twinkling of an eye, and he's going to hit that switch, and all of us that's got the blood applied, wham, we're going to be gone. And as sure as I'm standing here, there's be an old boy sitting right here working on that machine. Now, they're not going to see that. We are. They're not. Now, they'll see the second coming. He's going to be sitting there working on that. Our hand. Hey, Stephen, will you hand me a 960? Stephen? Stephen, he was right here. What happened? This roof is huge. There's no, what in the world happened? Husband and wife be laying in the bed, sound asleep. You wake up that morning. Where you at, honey? You stagger into the coffee pot, she ain't there. You go look on the porch, she ain't there. You open up the doors, honey, where are you? Where you at? The magnet daughter, she's gone. It's going to happen just like that, I promise you. And you ain't going to have time. And those that remain here, boy, you're in for it. Over in Thessalonians, it says, he that, will let, will, that has let will be taken away. You know what that's talking about? The Holy Spirit that's on this earth. I mean, Brother Laddie, this earth is evil and wicked, but still there is a Holy Ghost and a God uh, that, that walks this earth and, and keeps some kind of peace and tells men about Jesus. Uh, but the very moment that Jesus does that, when we get out of here, the Holy Ghost is going with us and you talk about evil. Oh, everything that's evil in imagination in men's eyes will come to pass. It'll be a time like never before. Uh, the Bible says every good person, every saved person uh, will be taken out of here and all that'll be left will be sinners and the wickedness of Satan. And man, this earth will be like nothing uh, that you've ever seen before. And there'll be a man called the Antichrist. He'll come out. and He's going to basically call himself God. I'm trying to dumb this down so the kids and everybody can get it. And he's going to say, let me explain to you what happened. And he's going to come up with some ridiculous idea on what happened. And he's going to bring peace. Israel's been in a war from the time it was birthed. But he's going to bring peace to Israel and the Middle East. And you know what? It's going to be good for about three and a half years. I mean, I know the Bible calls us the little flock, but he's blessed some of the little flock and everything that we have. I've told them, I've called my address out before and said when the rapture comes, y'all are welcome to go to my house and get everything I got because I ain't going to need it no more. There's going to be a lot of stuff left behind here. And people's going to have abundance of wealth. And man, that's going to be pretty good for a while. Three and a half years, there's going to be peace. All the Christians that leave their stuff behind. But boy, there ain't going to be some folks that call themselves Christians. Some of these TV preachers that's worth Tens of millions of dollars. They ain't leaving their stuff to nobody. They better hang on to it. They're going to need it. Amen. Right. Amen. Right. Let me go on. Then all of a sudden, after about three and a half years, things are going to change. Amen. That Antichrist is going to want to go into the temple that they're going to build. And he's going to want to start doing sacrifices again. And that's going to be a stink in the nostrils of God. And he's going to start pouring out tribulation on this old earth like it's never been before. There's going to be things happen that you can't even imagine. If you want to turn with me over to Revelation chapter 16, you can read some of them for yourself. The Bible says that at this time of tribulation, and I'm just going to skim through for sake of time. I don't want to bore you, but I want you to be warned. The Bible said it's going to be a time. The Bible goes on to say at the end, it said, if it wasn't that the Lord shortened these days, that nothing on earth would be saved. It's going to literally be hell on earth. The Bible said that the floods of Noah, 
The days of Sodom and Gomorrah are nothing to what he's going to put onto this earth. The Bible said there'll be grievous sores upon men that do not take the mark of the beast. Man, I tell you what, after, give me a minute, look up here. We're going to get to some bad stuff and we're going to get out of here. I'm just going to go through it right quick. I'm done losing folks' attention. Look up here for a minute. They're going to, when Jesus comes back and he's gone, the Holy Ghost is going to be gone. Uh, there'll be no more drawing you to be saved. Uh, that that uh, Antichrist will stand up uh, that made peace and you thought was so good. And all of a sudden he's going to stand up and he said, you're going to worship me as God. And if you don't worship me as God, you won't be able to buy. You won't be able to sell. You won't be able to have anything. And you'll have to take a mark in your hand. You say, well, preacher, I'll, I'll recognize that. I won't take that mark. Oh, don't be so sure about that. Uh, Dwayne, if you were to see that little old baby boy right there, and you could see his ribs and his little belly swelled up, and he was a begging and a crying, Daddy, I'm hungry. I'm dying. I want something to eat. He had bacteria and sores on him, and you could smell his flesh uh, rotten right in front of you, and you couldn't do nothing but uh, go to the Antichrist and get that mark uh, so that you could go get him a little bit of food and a little bit of medical help. I want to tell you how many people uh, will be able to stand that uh, to watch their children and their parents and loved ones die. It'll be hard times and you'll take that mark uh, so that you can save your family. But when you do that, uh, you'll be doomed to hell forever and ever and ever. It's a serious and they're already lining up for it right now. Whole Foods in Asheville, you can go in there and they will scan your hand and you don't have to have a card. You don't have to have a phone. Y'all hear me talk about grooming the other day? You know what they grooming? They grooming for the Antichrist. He ain't going to come in all of a sudden and say, hey, let's line up and get the mark of the beast. He's going to be subtle. He's going to be slick. The Bible said that Satan was the most subtle beast on the earth. It's the one that got Eve. It's the same one that's still tricking folks today. It's the same one that's going to stand up and cry peace. He's going to say, if you'll take this mark, uh, you'll be able to buy and sell, uh, but you'll be signing uh, your death certificate to a devil's hell when you do. And then all of a sudden the Bible said uh, that men will have sores and boils all over their body and they will blaspheme God and curse his name. And the Bible said that hell and fire uh, will fall from heaven and burn up a third of the grass and the trees and the vegetation and the crops and there'll be famines uh, like that the earth has never ever seen before. And then the Bible said there'll be a great asteroid uh, fall from heaven and turn a third of the waters into wormwood. It'll be bitter and men will be thirsty and you'll go to your faucet and turn it on and it'll be water that you can't drink and the very God that said let there be light. He'll take that big old hand and he's going to shove that sun a little bit closer to the earth and the Bible said that it'll scorch men and burn men and they will blaspheme God and curse his name. And he said, then he'll turn the seas and the water into blood. And he said, all the animals in the sea uh, will die. Hey, you'll be sitting right there uh, cursing God uh, because you're burning up and your tongue is splitting. And you'll go to your faucet to get a drink of water and coagulated blood will come out. And you'll curse God for that. That's what the book says. And then all of a sudden the Bible says uh, that the hell will be opened up and there'll be a great smoke come up out of the mist. And there'll be locusts come out of there and they'll be like scorpion with one attire and brass head playing in a man's face and they will sting men for months and torment them and their bodies and men will curse God again and blaspheme his name. Just sound like something you want to go through. You say, preacher, you're crazy. I don't believe it. I'll tell you what, if you don't believe it, uh, reject God and stick around and you'll get to find out for yourself, but then it'll be too late. You'll say, that little preacher wasn't crazy. I wouldn't have God I'd have listened to him. It's going to happen as sure as the world. Amen. Amen. There'll be disease and hunger like never before. And I've read some scholars say, he said, there'll be no antidote for it. There'll be no medicine that'll cure this stuff. I mean, when all the animals are dying and decaying and the waters turn to blood, can you imagine sores all over men's bodies? 
There'll be disease, it'll stink. You won't even want to go outside. And the Bible said that the mountains, there'll be earthquakes like never before. It said every island will disappear and the mountains will be no more. It'll be an earthquake like it's never happened before. And the Bible said that men will run to the rocks and they'll hide and they'll beg for death, but death won't find them. I believe with all my heart, uh, there'll be people uh, when them days come, uh, there'll be little girls, uh, there'll be moms, there'll be dad, they'll run in the kitchen and say, I can't take it no more. Uh, we're starving, the pain, the heat. I can't take it and they'll cut their wrist and they'll watch all the blood pour out and they'll feel the same pain uh, but they won't be able to die they'll be walking around the streets like zombies y'all think it's funny uh, somebody is grinning at me and smiling and smirking this is the judgment of God and it's going to happen and if you reject God you'll go through this it ain't nothing to smile about there'll be people grab a gun and blow their brains out and they'll feel the pain and their brains will be hanging out of their head and they'll still be walking around in the pain saying God uh, take my life but it'll be too late you've rejected God now you're in the suffering part of it the Bible said it's going to be so bad that if God didn't shorten these days all the world would be wiped out you've got one chance to miss this Look up here at me. You've got one chance to miss this. And that's Jesus Christ and Him alone. My God, we was talking about this yesterday. I'm about to die and come on to the piano. I wanted to go further, but I'm going to close right here. Moms and dads, if you don't get right and do right, when this goes south for your kids, it's going to be your fault. Every head bowed and every eye closed. I want to tell you something. And I know it was hard for this woman, but she did it. I won't say the church or where it happened, but I went to a church some years ago. Preached a revival. One night, God let me preach on hell and the repentance it takes to miss it. That preacher had been a pastor for probably 20 years. His wife right by his side in the ministry, teaching Sunday school, leading the choir, doing all the work that a pastor's wife should. And that night I stood up and gave the altar call. And the Holy Ghost dealt with her heart. And don't you know the devil went to her and said, you can't get up and go to that altar. You're the preacher's wife. Everybody thinks you're saved. What are they going to think? You better get that mess out of your mind. If you're sitting here this morning and you're not 100% sure that you're saved, you better not worry about what your wife thinks, how many years you've been in church. You better slip out and come up here and ask God into your heart. But that woman got up and made her way up to the altar and got right with God. She stood around, turned around to the church and she said, for years I thought I was saved. She said, but I thank God that tonight he showed me that I wasn't. She said, but better than that, I want to stand up and say he saved me tonight. That can be you. Maybe you've just been backslid on God and not living like you are too. Why don't you just slip out and come up here and let us pray with you? You better know that you know that you know. If there's any doubt in your mind, you better get it settled. These days are soon coming upon this earth and you better be ready. And you will not get saved without the Holy Ghost to draw you. You say, my heart's beating out of my chest. I could come put my hands on several. Your heart's beating fast. You're worried, but your family loves you and they'd give anything in the world to see you get right with God. Won't you just slip out and come pray? Let me, let me switch to the church right quick. Church, if you've got lost loved ones that you know is not right with God, why don't you just slip out and come pray and beg God to give them another chance. Beg God to be merciful to them. Beg God to go to them and draw them one more time. All right, you, that you know you're not right with God. You know you're not living where you are too. You thought, boy, if the altar was full, 
and I wouldn't be uh, uh, called out or, or it'd be a spectacle. I'd come, the altar's full. Why don't you just slip in here behind some of these folks and say, God, I want to know for sure that I'm, my name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Anybody? Why don't you come? The altar's full. What I've told you is going to happen as sure as the world. And the only way for you to get by this is Jesus Christ. But you know the bad thing? Once you go through this, then you're going to have to go to hell forever and ever and ever and ever. But I'm glad Jesus made a way. If you say, preacher, that spoke to me, I'm not sure. That kind of worries me and scares me. Please, nobody looking around. I won't tell a soul, but I will pray for you. Would you raise your hand up and say, preacher, would you pray for me? I'm kind of, God bless that hand. Preacher, would you pray for me? I'm not sure. God bless these other hands. Those that raised your hand, why don't you just slip out and come pray so that you can get that peace knowing that your name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life and knowing that when Jesus comes, uh, you won't be left behind. I've never ever said this before in an altar call in my life, but I want to say this. If you didn't come down here this morning, but you prayed in your pew, please, nobody looking around, that's everybody, please, nobody looking around. If you sit right there in your pew this morning and you prayed and you said, God, I'm not sure, but I sit right here this morning and I ask God to forgive me and help me, would you raise your hand up so I can know and God will know? Anybody? Anybody? Anybody else want to pray this morning? I'd do anything I could to keep myself out of that situation or my family. It could happen any day. But thank God Jesus made a way. for the chance that God gives us to make things right. Well, without that, we'd be a hopeless people, wouldn't we? Thank God for the hope in Christ Jesus and Him alone. I'm glad I'm saved this morning. Brother, you take all the time you want. I'm glad I'm saved this morning. I'm glad there's an old man of God that stood where I stand here this morning. And I ain't worthy of nothing. But I'm glad there's some old men of God gave me the warning. Showed me the way. Thank God for that. Appreciate that word. He said, preacher, I don't like that kind of preaching. It scares me. We need it. You say, oh, you just trying to scare people into getting saved. You mighty right. I didn't get saved because I just fell in love with Jesus. I got saved, Brother Mike Marsh, because I didn't want to die and go to hell. Then I fell in love with Jesus after I realized what he really did for me. If you'll come back tonight, and God will help me, there have been other questions asked. Will the church have to go through that? Will the church have to endure that? How deep in that will we go? If you'll come back tonight, I promise it'll probably just be 15 minutes. But I'll give you some assurance. And some clarity out of the word of God. It can give you peace of mind. I love you folks. Let's all stand. We'll be dismissed.